NCARB has updated the ARE 5.0 exams to reference the 2021 edition of the IBC. This is current as of spring of 2024. And with any code cycle change, there are always some things, some differences between the 2018 IBC and the 2021 IBC. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to give you all a sample problem of things you might see uh, on the ARE 5.0 exam as it relates to some of these code changes. So we're going to cover uh, generally building height, building area, building our formulas and the new frontage increase calculation, which is, has changed quite a bit from the 2018 edition. Um, these questions are from my PPD, P, PD study assignments course. And I think it's mostly applicable to the PPD exam, but things you might see on PA as well. Uh, I'm Ben, this is Hyperfine, let's get started. Uh, so our scenario is this is a multi-story group M building, type 2A construction, it is equipped with sprinklers and has an accessory occupancy. The owners want to build the maximum number of stories. That'll come in later when we deal with our allowable era formula. Uh, it has one public way on the front and three interior lot lines shown in the diagram below. I think I'm going to put this on YouTube. So if you're watching on YouTube, check the description for a link to get a PDF of this thing. So all this stuff about building areas, building heights is all chapter five of the IBC. This is now 2021 for the ARE 5.0. So if we scroll down, our first question is, what is the allowable building height in feet? So to do this, you need to find your occupancy classification. It's given to you. I said it's it's occupancy group A or class A. If you don't know or it's not given to you in the assignment, check out chapter three, which has all the different definitions of all the different occupancies. So we know we're M, so we got to find our row. Um, we know we're sprinklered from the, from the assignment. So NS or S, you can check down here. You can see there's going to be NS, S. Um, S13D and S13R, you can check the footnotes for what those are, but basically NS is not sprinklered, S is sprinklered, and then 13D and 13R are residential only type sprinklers, which is why they're only listed on the residential occupancy groups. So we are group M, we're sprinklered, so we're going to follow the bottom row across, and then we got to find our type of construction. It was given as 2A, so we see our maximum height is 85 feet. That's, that's in feet. There's also a limitation on height in number of stories. That's in the next table down. So just scroll down to 504.4. And it's the same process here. It's broken out. All the different subgroups in the occupancy are broken out. So A, all of A is not in one row. You can see it's A1, A2, and so on. And so we got to scroll down again and find M. Again, we'll follow the bottom row across where we do have sprinklers. And we have to remember where our column was, but it was type 2A construction. So we'll see that our maximum number of stories is five. So 85 feet and five stories is our height limit. The next two, what is the tabular area factor? Explain it in your words and what's the actual number and then what is the increase due to sprinklers? So building area stuff is in section 506. Table 506.2 gives you your allowable area factors. Um, and it's been this way for a while. I think it changed with 2015. So 2012 and earlier, you would read your actual building height and area out of a table. And then there were some formulas that you applied if you had sprinklers or frontage. Now all that stuff or the sprinklers is baked into it. So you get a tabular area and then you use this value from this table in a formula that's in the subsequent sections, which we'll cover in just a minute. So um, the tabular area formula is just a factor that you use to then plug into equations to find what your actual area is. There's no more additional um, math to find your sprinkler increase. It's included here in the table in these different rows, just the same way we saw with, um, uh, with the two tables we used just a minute ago. So again, let's find our row and scroll down. So we're going to be type 2A construction. We're looking for group M. So here it is right here. So we read across, and then there's three. Again, check the footnotes, but NS means no sprinklers. S1 is sprinklered, but one-story building. And SM is sprinklered multi-story building, which is what we have. So group M, we follow the bottom row, and our tabular area factor is 64,500. So we're going to use that in our formula. Uh, it's good to note that the non-sprinklered value is also used in most of the formulas, even if your building has sprinklered. So write that one down as well. 21,500 is the non-sprinklered version or the non-sprinklered tab tabular area factor. Um, for us, ours is going to be 64,500. So once we have our tabular area factor, we can come down to the next subsection and find whichever is the correct formula for our condition to use to find the actual allowable area. 
And we'll do that in a minute, but all the formulas include an increase factor for frontage, which is open space around a building. So let's go find that first, then we'll have all the variables we need and we'll come back and find our formula and fill it out. So frontage is in 506.3. Um, this is changed in the 2021 IBC. It's a little bit easier than it was before. The gist of it is you get an increase in allowable error for your building if there's more open space around your building. Um, the limit or the minimum is 20 feet. And so the general process is to find the perimeter of your building, find the percent of that perimeter that has frontage of at least 20 feet, and then come down into this table and find what your factor is. So it's gonna be easier if I just demonstrate it on some paper. So let's go do that now. So to find the frontage increase, we need to look at a couple of things. First, you have to have at least 25% of the perimeter um, to have open space in front of it. And I can sort of tell by looking at it that we do, but you'll find that sort of in, this, in the first step. Um, so the first thing I would do is add up the perimeter. So that'd be the length of wall A plus B plus C plus D plus E plus F plus G plus H. So when I do that, I've got 24, 6, 8, 27, all that as 146 linear feet of perimeter around that wall. Then you want to look for walls that have at least 20 foot of frontage or 20 feet of open space. And the definitions are an IBC, but it's basically to an interior lot line. So if you got 20 feet to a lot line, if you got 20 feet across a public way, um, and I think there's one more, I can't remember because I'm not in front of the computer right now, but check those out in 506.3. So then what I look at is the walls in this diagram that have more than 20 feet. So that's this one, this is wall B, which has eight feet and then 12 feet to that line. So that's 20 feet right there. Wall C has 20 feet across the public way. This wall does not because it's only 12 feet to the lot line. This rear wall E does have at least 20 feet. Wall F does have at least 20 feet. And then these two walls also have at least 20 feet because it's at right angle. So this wall is measured across the public way. This wall right here is measured to that lot line. So when we add those ones up, that's wall C, E, F, G, and H that equals 89. So the next thing you do is find what percentage is that of the total. So 89 divided by 146 is 61%. Then you have to find the shortest frontage um, and you use the shortest frontage. So here we see we've got various different ones. I don't know if you can read that. So this one down here is the longest. This is 35 feet. This one here is actually probably longer. That's 41 feet. Um, but a couple of them have just 20 feet. So walls G and C. So this wall and this wall have the shortest distance. It's 20 feet perpendicular from here to the end of the public way on that side. So with those two values, with 61%, the perimeter having frontage, and then the shortest frontage of any of the frontages that are available is 20 feet. Um, you take those into table 506.3.3. So this is just a tabularized version of the old way you just had to do the math in 2018 and earlier. So we're here, 50, so percentage of building perimeter that has a frontage, we're at 61, so we're right here. And then open space, um, if it's less than 20, it doesn't count. If it's 20 to 25, you read this column and so on. And so we're right here at 0.33. Um, now the code says you are allowed to interpolate it. So we are at 20, so we're at the, at the lowest level. What I think that means is, Let's say you were halfway between 20 and 29, so this is 25 to less than 30. So if you were at say, um, if you were at say 24 and a half, your shortest frontage was 24 and a half feet, you could probably go halfway between 0.33 and 0.42. For us, it doesn't really matter. We're at 0.33 because that's the lowest value we can use. Or I'm sorry, that's the we're we're at 20, so we're already at the lowest value of of this part of the table. So now let's come back to the code and finish the problem, which is what is the actual allowable area? And we're going to look, this is now in 506.2.1, so right below our tabular area factor table. Um, we're looking for single occupancy buildings. And then within that, there's two formulas. There's 5-1 and 5-2. So 5-2 will be for multi-story. 5-1 is for single story. Uh, and so our formula here is A sub A equals AT plus NS times NF times SA. And so we already have all these numbers. 
AA, that's where we're trying to find the actual allowable area. AT is our tabular area factor, that was 64,500. And S is the non-sprinklered version of the table, of the factor table. Um, and so that's 21,500. IF, the increase to frontage, we just found that. That's going to be 0.33. And I should have noted before, but that number has to be less than 1. Um, so as you saw, the table doesn't go above 1. If you somehow end up with a number higher than 1, you did it wrong. And then there's SA, which can cause some confusion uh, because it is a factor based on the allowable height, but it's not the same as the allowable height. And this changed slightly in 2021 IBC as well, but you can read it right here. It says S sub A equals three, where the actual number of stories above grade plane exceeds three. Uh, and so we know we have five stories, we're allowed five stories, and we know that the owners in our scenario want to max it out. So even though we are allowed to build five stories, within this formula of allowable area for the entire building, you can only max it out at three. Um, you could also do four, where it's equipped with an automatic sprinkler system in accordance with this section. If you go to that section, you'll see that's an S13R or a S13D sprinkler. So the four is only if you have a residential occupancy. So we're going to use three. So even though we're allowed to build five stories, in this equation, we can only use three. So what that looks like is with our equation, A sub A actual allowable area equals A tabular plus non-sprinkler tabular plus in, or multiplied by increase in frontage, multiply that whole thing by that SA factor. Our AT was 64,500. Our non-sprinklered version was 21,500. Our increase for frontage was 0.33, which we did a minute ago. And SA is three because we have five stories. We can use a maximum of three right there. So to do the formula, it's 64,500 plus 21,500 multiplied by 0.33. Multiply that whole thing by three. So 21,500 multiplied by 0.33 is 7095 plus 64,500 is 71,595 multiplied by that three from the SA. And our allowable area in this assignment is 214,785. And I think the only thing I didn't cover was that little bit about the accessory occupancy, and that was just extraneous info. Um, you can read about that in 506.2, and then I think also in chapter three. But if you have an accessory occupancy, it's considered ancillary to the primary use, and so it's not a mixed use. That accessory occupancy has to be classified according to which occupancy group it is. So whether it's A or R or whatever it is, but it does not need to be fire separated the same way it would have to if this was a mixed occupancy project. So if you see um, accessory occupancy in an assignment um, or on the you know on the exam, just know that that's not going to count. That's not going to change your formula. That's not going to change the use group of the entire thing. You just do the entire project as if it were whatever the main occupancy is um, for that problem. And that's about it for the assignment. If you got any questions um, and you're in the course, leave a comment on the answer page. If you're watching this on YouTube, leave a comment and uh, I'll try to get back to you as quick as I can, but I'm not great at responding to YouTube comments. And the only other thing I think I missed is um, where I said list the actual number and there's an asterisk. Uh, the only thing I put that in there is because it reminded me of this time in seventh grade when I had a reading test because we were reading the scarlet letter and we had a quiz to see if we actually did the reading which i didn't and the question was what is the scarlet letter and all i had to do was write a letter but of course i didn't know what it was so i got it wrong uh, i learned later that the scarlet letter is a so i don't think that'll come up on the ARE 5.0 exams but i'm not supposed to tell you the answers anyway but now you know the scarlet letter is a